This is SLA TV, television for the beef cattle industry. These cattle are line bred, they're predictable, they're consistent. What our customers love and come here for is these cattle are proven, predictable, they're uniform, they're consistent in type and kind. It's what you see is what you get. They breed true and you know, and, and, and with all the data that we have behind them and the years of selection, these cattle have proven themselves to work and, and we know, you know, with the data behind them what, what they're gonna do, what they're gonna do for us and what they're gonna go do for our customers. Just getting ready for weaning, uh, right now, this time of year, we're going to wean this set of bull calves. Just finished baling straw and finished up our second cutting hay crop. Uh, had a real nice hay crop this year, thankfully, uh, and uh, going to be in good shape for hay. You know, this country, it takes uh, two to three tons of hay per cow to get a cow through the winter uh, with calving and everything, especially with, with calving in January and February like we do. Right now, we're also fall calving. We'll have about 100 calves born in August and September uh, for our in our fall program and so we've got that going on and and uh, just getting ready for what they say is going to be a, a nice long long winter kind of get these bulls on feed and get ready and rolling for sale and this fall and and start doing pictures for advertising we started out uh, small and we've grown to where, you know, now we're marketing 150 bulls. Uh, we calve about 400 cows a year between spring and fall. Two thirds of those would calve in the spring and about a third in the fall. We're actually calving right now in August, uh, August and September and then our, our winter calving is in January and February. Proving the genetics of the world's line one closed herd requires superior data management from all breeders. The Holdens conduct extensive performance testing on their cattle to optimize the genetic potential of their Line 1 herd. We got our first registered uh, Hereford cattle, Line 1 Hereford cattle, back in the early 1950s. Uh, so we've had registered Hereford cattle for over 60 years now. Uh, we were pioneers in performance testing. My grandpa was one of the charter members of the Montana Beef Performance Association. We started performance testing in 1956. We've always believed in performance testing our cattle. We weigh all of our calves at birth. Uh, we, we do weaning weights, take yearling weights, we do ultrasounding. Uh, we want to take all the weights and measures on these cattle uh, that we can to give our customers all the information that we can about them. Uh, you know, make sure we have accurate information going in, get accurate EPDs out. We really try and be ahead of the game on the technology end of things uh, to give all the uh, information we can for our customers. People sell pounds, and we want it in the right package and the right kind, uh, but, but people get paid for the pounds of calves and also the, the right kind that goes along with it, and, and that's our goal is to produce cattle that, that do it every, every way, shape, and form. We are really known for our cow herd and the maternal land and the utter quality and the fertility and fleshing ability in our females. 40% of our calf crop born every year is from embryo transfer matings out of our very best, most proven cows. Uh, we don't use young heifers, we use cows that we know out of really proven cow lines and it's our way of getting more uh, you know, females and so in our herd and sons in our sale out of those really great cows and more of those genetics out of those top females back into our herd. Um, we also, uh, for over 30 years, we have parentage verified all of our cattle. Uh, used to start it out back in the days with uh, blood sampling. Now we use DNA for everything. We also, 100% of our cow herd and all of our sale animals have genomically enhanced EPDs with the 50K panels on them. Uh, so just a way of getting as much information as quick as possible to make, uh, help our customers have accurate information to make the best decisions they can when they purchase cattle from us and for ourselves for the cattle that we put back in our herd to know what's going on. So I, I do believe, you know, technology that's out there is available to help us all make better decisions, uh, you know, and the, and the more tools that you have in your toolbox to improve your breeding program, the better you are. Our consistency that um, Holden Bulls have has, has really been a big factor in our success in our cattle in the last 12, 14 years. Our weaning rates have changed a lot and our sale weights have increased probably about 100 pounds. If you're raising a commercial herd or you're raising a registered herd, you need to come up to Jack Holden's and, and look at the cattle. We think it's the best Hereford cattle there are. 
I mean, they're the most consistent Hereford cattle there are in the world, in our opinion. I've always thought it was the best maternal cow herd I'd ever seen. And um, so we've tried to stay fairly close to that through the years. The commercial guys, they like the good pigment on these bulls. They like them to be marked well. And that's a plus in our part of the country. And the udder quality is so good on these cattle and they've got such a strong set of cows that we're able to improve our herd through those genetics, through the bulls. The reason we all come back is they have uh, uniformity and consistency because of their line breeding program that uh, just goes on and on and on. The, the Holden Bulls, they, they stay, and stay together. I mean, we, we've got bulls that we've had 11 years since the very first bull we brought. And, oh, they're absolutely, I mean, they're like your pet. I mean, we pet our bulls every day. They, they're, they're just all absolutely wonderful on, you know, being gentle. One of the reasons that we came initially to the Holden program was because of consistency and, and our being attracted to the Line 1 uh, program. And we are we stuck with the Line Bud program and our Line 1 program and our operation as well. And we believe in it because of the consistency that we've seen in, in Holden's program where, you know, the ability to, to find certain performance traits that you need in a bull and see that carried on generationally is really important to us and it's really important important to our customers. If agriculture was easy, everybody would do it. Hats off to America's food producers from SLA TV. The Four Sixes Ranch, with its headquarters in Guthrie, Texas, is as legendary as its founder, Samuel Burke Burnett. Known simply as Burke, Burnett was born in Missouri in 1849, but came to Texas with his family in about 1857. When Burke was 17, his father sent him with a herd of cattle on a trail drive to the markets in Kansas. When he was 19, Burke went up the trail again, this time as the boss. He had gone into the cattle business for himself a little earlier when he bought 100 head of cattle bearing the 4-6 brand. With title of the cattle, he also received ownership of the brand, and that dispels the often repeated story about how Burke, in a poker game, won the Four Sixes Ranch with a hand of Four Sixes. Burke knew the value of a good horse, and down through the years, the Four Sixes has had some good ones. As Burke built his Four Sixes Ranch, he married Ruth Lloyd, daughter of Fort Worth banker M.B. Lloyd, and in honor of his father-in-law, Burke branded all his horses with an L on the left shoulder, and that continues to be the Four Sixes horse brand. Burke and Ruth had three children, but only one, Tom, lived to become an adult. Tom worked for his father for a number of years, but in the early 1900s, he went out on his own and established the Triangle Ranches, one at Iowa Park and the other at Paducah, Texas. Tom and his wife, Olive, had one daughter, Anne Valiant Burnett, who in later years became known throughout ranching circles in the Southwest as Miss Ann. Today, the Four Sixes ranches are owned by Mrs. Ann Marion, the great-granddaughter of Samuel Burke Burnett. Joe, you've been here for quite a few years, so you've seen a lot of changes in the cattle operation on the Four Sixes. Let's talk about some of the early cattle that were here and how all of this has morphed into what it is today. Well, Red, when I came here 17 years ago, um, the ranch was, we had straight Hereford cows. In my opinion, probably some of the best Hereford cows in Texas and, and probably a large part of the United States. Um, we just saw a change in uh, the marketing of the Hereford cattle. Uh, we saw a need to start making a transition, and so after a uh, hundred years of Hereford cattle, plus or minus, um, we started making a transition to black cattle by using quality Angus bulls on our Hereford cows. Mm -hmm. And um, in, that, in the 17 years I've been here, we've made that transition, and we have straight black cows, a few black baldies left, uh, but uh, we've seen the increase in performance in the feedlots, the quality of the, the meat that's going to the packers and to the customers. 
into the retail uh, improved dramatically. Uh, the temperament of the cattle are better, um, largely due to genetics and, and also largely due to the brush control that we've done here. And several years ago you had a tremendous challenge. You had no grass, you had no water. Uh, the drought was devastating to all of West Texas. And tell us about the changes you made and how you have protected the genetics of these cattle and protected your numbers. Well, in 2011, we were going into a historic drought here in Texas. I thought that I knew what a drought was uh, until 2011, but uh, we were faced with uh, 100 plus degree heat for weeks and weeks and weeks on end. Uh, our water was uh, fast uh, becoming non-existent. The grass was short and we, we looked, uh, first thing we looked at was the condition of the ranch and um, made the decision that if we didn't do something drastic that we were gonna hurt this land uh, for the future generations of the, that, that's coming up to run the ranch and to live on it. And then we looked at um, the genetic, the, the money that we had put into genetics over the years and you know, you can't get those genetics back in a short amount of time. And then the third factor we looked at was we have a lot of uh, second and third generation people that work on this ranch. And uh, the employees here mean a lot to us, mean a lot to Ann. Um, you know, they're like family. And so we looked at all those factors and decided that we needed to, to think outside the box and see what we could come up with to hold our genetics and our numbers together. Uh, gambling that the market would be there in the future. So over a period of time uh, of about a year and a half, we ended up moving over 4,000 cows north. We held our base herd together and, um, and went through the transition with the cows, moving them up north, which was not always uh, easy. But uh, we got it done because of good people and, uh, and hard work. And so we were able to keep our employees together. We were able to keep our numbers of cattle together and keep our numbers up, and um, that's where we are today. Joe, what's the criteria that you use to select the females that you're gonna keep for your herd? We go through and we pick the best of the best when they're as heifer calves. And we will go back through and we will select another two or three times. We'll cull on those cattle two or three more times. And then, we, we don't give any second chances here. If, if those heifers don't have a calf, well obviously if they don't breed, will we get rid of the, the open cows. But then if that heifer doesn't raise a calf, uh, and she doesn't have a calf on her side in the spring when we're branding, she's gone. And if that heifer is not uh, bred, she's gone. And that same criteria happens all the way through uh, to adulthood in that cow. There's no second chances. But if a cow can't raise a calf in the winter and breed back and be in good flesh going into spring, not, not after they've been on green grass for you know a month or two and really on the, on the mend, but if that cow is not an easy fleshing cow, then, then she's gone because she just does not have what it takes for our our program because we want a cow that not only is confirmationally good, genetically good, but that can get out and make a living. The third criteria is they've got to perform in the feedlot. Uh, we fed our own cattle for years and years, uh, all the way through, and uh, so we've got a lot of data on how well our cattle perform. And if we've got a group of cows, it's hard for us to individually keep up with an individual calf, but if our cattle as a whole aren't performing like they need to in a feedlot, we need to adjust on that in the bull battery. But it's also got to happen in the females. The stars shine brighter when you're out on the range. You're watching SLA TV. 
Superior Livestock Auction is the largest cattle marketing network in North America. Superior sells forward contracted and immediate delivery load lots of cattle on video auction that are broadcast on satellite TV and streamed online. Superior does it by marketing your cattle to the largest qualified buyer base in the nation. Your cattle never leave your ranch until delivery day. Your Superior rep will be there when your cattle are sorted and loaded, then write you a check when it's done. Simple as that. Superior Livestock Auction sells more cattle each year than any other livestock auction in the U.S., giving you the best opportunity for top dollar on your cattle. Superior's number one focus is getting you the best paycheck possible. Most producers only get one paycheck a year, and that's why more cattlemen and women trust Superior Livestock Auction to get the most out of every sale. Your hard work deserves top dollar. So call Superior or discover more online to learn how Superior Livestock Auction can work for you. I was born into the cattle business uh, for generations before me. My family had cattle and I grew up with commercial cattle and some registered Simital cattle. Uh, so you can say that I was, I was bred to be in the cattle business. The main goal of our operation at Bub Ranch is to produce environmentally sound cattle that are just really functional in our part of the country. I absolutely love ranching, uh, the diversity that it offers. You know, we get to see calves born. Uh, we get to work with customers, uh, get to be around the animals and, and out in God's handiwork every day. And it, it just uh, has allowed me to raise my family uh, in a way that I think is wholesome and pure and natural. And, and I just think this is where God wants me to be. Performing in this country, in our opinion, means cattle that can go out uh, with a healthy rumen and convert grass into pounds of beef. It also means that we have to deal with heat and fescue grass because that's our primary form of forage. Fescue grass, as we all know, have um, some toxins that are very detrimental to cattle. They're vasoconstrictors. Um, there are certain bloodlines of cattle that just cannot handle this. Uh, we sort those cattle out, we find the ones that do, and then we have to find cattle that can convert that fescue grass without having the adverse effect of fescue foot, short tails, short ears, hair coat. We definitely look for cattle that are easy fleshing, that can make it on you know, as little supplement as possible. The cow herd is supplemented in the winter using usually some form of supplement tub. Uh, however, during the summer months, all they have available to them is forage and mineral and that's it. And so that's one of the, the traits we look for is easy fleshing. We also like them to be slick haired, um, good footed. We're in really rugged territory here. Our ranch is one of the smoother, better laying pieces of ground, but we have cooperator herds that run on um, really rough terrain in northern Arkansas, down in the Boston Mountains and those areas. And so we have cattle down there. We understand what it takes for those cattle to be able to survive in the Ozarks. They have to have clean joints. They have to have good feet. They have to be sound. Well, we're looking for cattle that uh, not only are, are born without assistance, uh, wean as heavy as possible in our part of the country with the heat and humidity that we face, um, cattle that can endure the heat and humidity that are a little bit slicker haired type cattle, um, cattle that uh, are also very attractive, nice udders, good sound feet, all of the things that everybody wants in a package that's fit for this part of the country. The heat and humidity is definitely a challenge that we have to uh, address every summer when it comes around. But it is a time of year of transition. The cattle are, are uh, chasing grass right now. They're coming off of hay in our part of the country. And uh, so it is early spring and it's time that we make some management decisions to decide how we're going to go into the summer. And those management decisions uh, include changing the type of mineral that the cattle are getting right now because it's, it's been a much warmer this spring than it's ever been in the history that we've been here. So we're thinking about making those changes a bit sooner this year than we traditionally make them. There are a lot of environmental challenges in this part of the world in terms of beef cattle production uh, that a lot of people don't understand. You know, a couple that come to mind are insects and then obviously fescue is, is certainly something that you have to pay attention to. 
So we were very excited to move the cattle herd to southern Missouri comparative to Michigan. The weather was much warmer. There's grass everywhere. Seemed like the best thing ever. So we put those cattle in the truck, moved them to south Missouri, and the first year the weaning weight suffered about 75 pounds a calf average. Um, that just wasn't acceptable to my dad, who was a stickler on records. So we started to delve into why this would happen. Why, you know, why did those cattle perform poorly in this part of the country? And we attributed that to um, heat, humidity, and of course fescue grass and some of the cattle not being able to handle the toxicity of fescue grass. The weaning weights were off, the hair coats were rough, um, the cattle just appeared to be stressed. They were in the pond a lot, um, they just they just didn't do well. Heat stress is very detrimental in beef production at times. You know, it can cause uh, many things such as weight loss, it can cause a, a decrease in your conception rates, it can simply cause a um, just decreased performance in general. There's many types of that, it, you know, it's just not simply the temperature outside, but when you encounter some of these things such as fescue toxicity and uh, things of that nature, it starts to play a, a really big role Cattle on fescue tend to have rougher hair coats. They, uh, they don't handle the heat as well in terms of breed back rates. So we need to find ways to manage fescue grass because it also has very important good qualities. Fescue toxicity or endophytes um, uh, do propose a problem. Um, they basically restrict blood flow. Now on the other hand, fescue is an awesome forage if it's managed accurately and correctly. It's a forage that has a long growing season. It's a forage that's very plentiful. It puts on a, a lots of tons per acre if it's managed correctly. So there's a lot of forage there available to the cattle, but certainly one that takes a little bit of management uh, and management practices to utilize to the, to the best of its ability, if you will. So the fescue grass handles this environment very well. We have to match the cattle to the fescue grass and use whatever tools we can to help them overcome the fescue. So when we're trying to overcome uh, obstacles that are presented from fescue and heat problems, one of the first things we do that we look for is, is to cull genetically. And then we need to use the tools around us to help us uh, with the rest of it. So anything we can do to find uh, a way to reduce the heat stress in those cattle, such as the heat mineral, uh, we've used that because anything that will enhance their breed back rate, their conception rate, their ability to stay pregnant, is a tool that uh, is just super important when we're managing fescue cattle. Heat mineral is uh, simply a combination of three or four things in one package. Uh, you've got a full vitamin and mineral pack that's very highly fortified. It's got an organic trace mineral pack in it. It's got garlic in it, uh, a natural garlic extract for insect control. It's got Amiferm in it, which is one of my favorite topics to talk about because this is simply a product that will help bring a return to your bottom line. Amiferm is a direct fed microbial that uh, acts as a natural prebiotic, if you will. It's going to encourage more intake in these cattle. It's going to allow for more fiber digestion and digestibility. And it's also going to allow for more nutrient absorption. All of this combined uh, equals basically a more efficient, uh, higher performing animal on the nutrition side. And the Amiferm and coupled with the extract that we put into the heat mineral pack, and there's some synergy there, if you will, and it's almost a one plus one equals three type situation. So when you put this entire package together in a free choice mineral, there's nothing but upside for certain parts of the country. So my son Danny runs our small feed store in Thayer, Missouri, and he called home one day and, and uh, said that he had a bite of firm a uh, sales rep in there discussing with him uh, the heat mineral. They really thought we should take a look at it, uh, something that would really kind of fit our store. I was trying to carry more value added products and they really wanted us to try and so we went ahead and got in, uh, I think at first I got in a pallet of conceptate and a pallet of heat mineral and kind of like everything else we sell down there at the feed store, we like to use what we sell. So he called home to discuss it with me. Uh, we're always willing to listen and, and look to anything that might help us. So that was around the 1st of August and the best we could do for a scientific uh, trial was to take two sets of cows on fescue grass, put one set on the heat, leave the other set on the mineral that they were on and see what happens. In about three weeks the cattle that were on the heat mineral had 
turn their coat from, you know, kind of rust color on the end of their hair. That's just usually associated with fescue. They turn black. If they were carrying any excess hair, they'd slicked it off. Um, they seem to have gained some weight. Uh, just really, really saw a big difference in a short amount of time. We went ahead and switched all the cows to Vitafirm Heat Mineral. Uh, we sold it to people that we knew that were interested in this sort of technology, uh, folks that are, are looking for ways to make their cow herd better, um, folks that might have been uh, having problems with uh, cattle and, and fescue. I think one of the things I've seen uh, getting to work the feed store, being at the counter there every day, is that there's a lot of people who still don't use some of the technology and the management practices that I think are going to become even more crucial for an operation to stay profitable in the future. So maybe it's just defined calving seasons or keeping records on weights and then of course the value added minerals and all that stuff go with it. Um, genomics testing and things like that. I think in the future it's going to become even more crucial that those things be implemented for an operation to be profitable. The greatest satisfaction that I get out of the products that we at Biozyme manufacture is when I get a call from our customers, when they talk about the increased performance or weaning weights or conception rates in their cattle, and I know at the end of the day the quality, sustainable products that we put out the door simply makes the life of our customer easier. The cattle business for me is, is more than just a job, it's a lifestyle. I've been raised in the ranching, out, um, the ranching industry and it's, it's about making an impact. Um, the benefits of working alongside your family far outweigh the challenges in my mind. I have a lot of respect for my mom because um, she kind of, her and my, my grandparents started this whole deal really from, from scratch. We'd had commercial cattle forever, but when we first started raising registered cattle, it was only for the sake of us breeding our own bulls, and it's kind of ballooned into so much more than that. And I don't even think she knew what it was going to turn into when she started 25 years ago. I, I absolutely love ranching, uh, the diversity that it offers. You know, we get to see calves born, uh, we get to work with customers, uh, get to be around the animals and, and out in God's handiwork every day. And it, it just uh, has allowed me to raise my family uh, in a way that I think is wholesome and pure and natural. And, and I just think this is where God wants me to be. Building a better beef industry together is what Blockyard is all about. But how exactly is it doing that? Let's see how Blockyard is putting the production health and genomic information you need right at your fingertips. It all starts when calves are tagged, issued electronic identification, and a tissue sample is collected using a tissue sampling unit or TSU. This sample provides the genomic information necessary to create a digital footprint. The process is as simple as creating a profile on Blockyard and uploading basic animal information. Once animals are enrolled and samples are processed, you'll see breed composition and available parentage results, and be able to order replacement heifer and feeder cattle predictions. You can get predictions on individual animals or on a group of animals. Either way, this secure information stays with the animal or animals, creating a digital story as information is gathered and entered into Blockyard. It's a story that can help everyone along the way, from cow-calf producer to the stalker backgrounder to the feedlot producer. As more data is entered at each stage, Blockyard can help make it easy to make informed decisions throughout the supply chain by documenting each animal's unique story. With Blockyard, you can have the information you need most right at your fingertips. Unlock your value chain with Blockyard. Get started at Blockyard.com. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let us honor our flag and country with the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed 
At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Throw the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rockets rattling The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free and the home of the brave Welcome to Superior Livestock Holstein Steer Auction for Thursday, May 10, 2023. 25 lots will be offered this afternoon for a total of 3,435 head, and that includes five supplemental lots. We'd like to remind everyone about tomorrow's next regular Superior Livestock Auction. 295 lots have been cataloged. That includes 13 supplemental lots for an offering of 38,639 head. The auction begins at 8 a.m. right after the Superior Sunrise at 7.30 a.m. Central Daylight Savings Time. Now let's look at our first lot in today's Holstein Steer Auction. That will be N-160A. N-168A lot. SD feeders, 130 Holstein steers with a base weight of 350 at Syracuse, Kansas, and they go August 1 to September 1 on the Superior right slide. They're BQA certified and NHTC approved, and your rep is Troy Shaw, and buyer of the A lot has the option on the B and C lot. And here's your auctioneer for this afternoon, world champion livestock auctioneer, Charlie Cummins. Take a look here, and here, down in the SDs. Get them in August or September now. Two, ten, and eleven, and twelve, and thirteen, and two hundred and thirteen, and thirteen, and twelve, and thirteen, and two hundred and twelve here now, thirteen, and fourteen, and fourteen, and two hundred and fourteen, and get an option on three up now, and thirteen, and fourteen, and two hundred and fourteen, and fifteen, and sixteen, and sixteen. And two hundred and sixteen, and a diamond and fifteen, and a diamond and second, and seventy, seventy nine, and a diamond and seventy, seventy nine, and a bell. I am two hundred and seventeen, and a diamond and eighteen, 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 and a diamond and eighteen,
He takes some bowls. Takes some bowls. Let's go to N169. M169 is still working for SD Feeders, Syracuse, Kansas. 130 Holstein steers at 350. Going September 1 to October 1 on the right slide. And this lot sells by itself, no option. September, October, Look at your phone. In 170 by the SD feeders. Now these are at Demet, Texas. A lot is 130 Holstein steers at 350. Now they go August 1, September 1 on the right slide. Buyer the A lot has the option on the B and C lot. Bit here to buy them on the landing and get it 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 and get
Take some both. Take some both. Let's go to lot number N172. These still working for SD Feeders at Demet, Texas. 130 Holsteins here at the 350. Check your delivery October 1 to November 1. They are October, November cattle. <laughs> Thank you. Now three. 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 Here's your supplement lot. Here we go. Nine hundred and ninety-nine. Two 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 hundred
Today. Takes them both. Takes them both. Let's move to end uh, 173.4. This is the point four supplement. Boger Farms, 95 whole sneeze here at 525. Check your delivery July 10 to 28. Yep, here. Hey, little bit of a 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 little Eight cent slide. I'm
And thank you, Zach. Let's go to N-177. N-177 is the lot to buy by McCool's Farm and Cattle at Gilmer, Texas. 50 Holstein here is a 975 going May 15 to 25th, 8 cents lined. Uh, predominantly AI side here. Hand a little bit and get a little bit in here. Hand forty, a little bit and pawn, a little bit and get a little bit and pawn, a little bit and forty one, a little bit and get a little bit and pawn. One hundred and forty bid, one by a little bit and forty, a little bit and here, and pawn, a little bit and two. I am now running a little bit of a hand and a little bit and have three, and a little bit and forty, a little bit and three, and a little bit and two, a little bit and three. I am now three, and a little bit and four, a little bit and get a little bit and here, and five, 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 a little bit and here, and
10 seconds. He's got eight, seven, six. Hey, you gonna take them all there, sir? I believe I'll time together. Takes them all. They've been together Takes the whole Takes them life. all. Let's go to N179. They're working for Oregon Dairy near Mesquite, New Mexico. 300 Holstein heifers at 1,050 pounds. These come May 15 to 26. You have the option to take right. one to six loads. Okay, cut. 130. Never had an implant. Just growing and developing the good dolls right there for you now. I'm here. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, down here now five you're of all three out now five and now six here six here and five and here now what about six on them and six here and now six all and six here now seven Not much by the head now. Or the gallon. And and now, down to the bit of the bit of the bit of and 
Thank you, Solom, 134.50. Next up. And he takes them all. Let's go to N180 by Oregon Dairy, Mesquite, New Mexico. 378 Holstein heifers at 1,200. These go May 15 to 26. And buyer this lot has the option to take one to nine loads, get cut. Up here, and a little bit and get a little bit and 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 and Never had new crop corn now. Five and a half, six and a half, and thirty six and a half, and thirty are you getting it? I'm at a bomb. 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 I
These are 312 Holstein heifers at 1300. One May 15 to 26. Buyer has the option to take one to eight loads. Okay, cut. Here, one day loads. Here we go. 130. Just make them all lots of 30. And 31. And 31. And now five and a little bit of five to get in and seven 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 and
and 32, and 30, and 2, and 30, and 2, and 3, 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 and and a quarter half, hundred and a bit in time, and hundred and seventy five, hundred and a little and set about it, and a bit and set about it, and a bit and four set about, and now five hundred and a little bit and thirty five, digging, 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 Six seventy five. Yeah, six seventy five. I little bit in seven pounds at about seven and a little bit in dirt and seven, a little bit in quarter, a little bit in time, and seven and a half, and a little bit in eight, 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 eight,